thank you very much for being with us today for our fifth and final international industry showcase focusing today on the Luxembourg blockchain ecosystem. A little bit about our fantastic speaker's background. Laurent Marocchini is an award-winning executive and head of innovation at Société Générale in Luxembourg. He's also a blockchain leader for the group and, a very active and, and is very active within the fintech ecosystem in Luxembourg and abroad. He's co-chairman of, of the Alfie Working Group Blockchain and Cryptocurrencies and a member of the Fintech and Digital Executive Committee. For those who don't know him, he's also a fantastic tree athlete. Tom Cattelt is the project lead of Infrachain. He's a member of the APSI policy group and a former member of the USD blockchain expert policy advisory board. Tom has 20 years of experience within the ICT sector, working mainly on topics related to telecoms and data centers. And he's a senior ICT advisor at Digital Lützebüch. Tobias Sadel is a fintech and investment structuring expert with more than 10 years of experience in the financial industry. As co-founder of Secos and of the blockchain-powered investment marketplace Stoker, he focuses on the challenges SMEs face when, when seeking funding in Europe and on the limited investment possibilities for retail investors. On the moderator side, we have Emily Allard, Head of Operations at The Loft. Emily uses her extensive experience in the banking and fund industry to tackle some of the industry challenges with specific projects and helps review the business model of the financial industry in Luxembourg by promoting innovation and innovative solutions. She's particularly, uh, particularly active in the digital assets and blockchain area and is co-chairman of the Alfi Working Group on Blockchain and Digital Assets. Ladies and gentlemen, Emily, the screens are yours. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, quite happy to welcome you on this webinar and to present you the blockchain ecosystem. So as you know, the Loft is a public-private uh, partnership. We are here to help fintech to enter the market and to help them grow within Luxembourg or entering the market via Luxembourg and grow into Europe. So we have a lot of partners, uh, to name a few, BCE, Société Générale, uh, with Laurent, namely, uh, State Street, Foyer, Clearstream, and some associate partners, such as Allen & Novry, Shields & Shields, Clifford Chance, or Loyans. Uh, we are supported by Luxembourg, let's make it happen, by the government of Luxembourg, by Luxembourg for Finance, uh, who are helping us promoting fintech around the world and the Chamber of Commerce of Luxembourg. Um, well, we are also incubating some of the fintech. Uh, we have some space, which is uh, either closed offices or open offices. And what makes the loft unique is uh, the collaboration between all the fintech and uh, also some of the blockchain companies, because we are all about community and making uh, the right contact with the right people. Uh, let's go through the fintech map. Uh, Luxembourg is quite active either in payments, big data, insure tech, reg tech, lending, but we are also building our, our way to blockchain. Uh, this is the, la the latest uh, map we did was in 2019. We're currently working on an update. Uh, you can see we're quite active on the various areas uh, such as financial inclusion, research, uh, registry certification, payments, wallets, business services, infrastructure, uh, tokenization. We have pretty much all of the, of the blockchain industry represented here. Uh, to name a few, we currently have Stampify on board at the loft, we have Stoker, we have Tokeny. I don't know if you've heard, but they are on the way to become the first uh, Luxembourg unicorn, and we're quite happy to have them here. Uh, Bitflyer started at the loft and is now as grown up as possible and uh, is uh, flying his own wings. Uh, we have also some older blockchain companies not dedicated to fintech, such as Arteya, Iro, or Anyot Music. Uh, we also have a dedicated task force um, at the loft, uh, which is uh, presided by uh, Laurent, uh, who has uh, behind him a lot of members helping him in, the, in his mission. Uh, maybe you can give a few words on this uh, dedicated task force. Yes, of course. So uh, we, we built uh, at the beginning of the year a task force dedicated to, to connect uh, all the different actors uh, in the blockchain industry to, to fix issues, tackle challenges and foster the collaboration. So you, you just said before that uh, you have the support of Luxembourg. Let's make it happen. So if you would like to make it happen, we need to we, we need to push the industry and to be actor of the change. So uh, we have a task force uh, dedicated to the to the blockchain 
with uh, seven uh, seven members and also one of the key challenges is, uh, is also to uh, issue recommendation to the board of uh, the lot so you have seen the different uh, member of the board and the one of the member of the board is the ministry of finance so we we issue uh, interesting uh, recommendation the the first one in terms of a recommendation is uh, the legal part uh, where we aim to issue uh, guidelines so we already have made uh, a kind of a gap analysis in uh, in europe about the different uh, regulation so you have seen in in france germany Liechtenstein, and switzerland they have issued uh, uh, regulation attractive regulation i would say so we have made a gap analysis to see how we can position uh, better position uh, luxembourg in this field uh, the education also is very uh, important and we will uh, discuss about the different recommendation with uh, with tom just after in infra chain but uh, we are working in training, in collaborative research, in also to, to, to bring a network for testing and work on talent, talent acquisition because we have no choice to, to have talent in the blockchain space. So we are working a lot about uh, education and, uh, and motoring. The banking relationship, uh, so I'm working for a bank, so I know exactly how it works. But uh, when you are talking about crypto asset, and uh, and blockchain uh, we need also to uh, accompany the different startups we we know that it's not always easy to open an account with a bank for for example and uh, we we work to find different uh, recommendations and help the different startups to to move uh, in the ecosystem as a whole and the last one uh, is a process and monitoring and we are um, in the process of creating a kind of a group of uh, not advisor but uh, to motor different startup and to ensure that we have the best process to to move forward uh, in this space especially uh, with the regulator also uh, so uh, we are working to to have a kind of uh, smooth process and we're working uh, to have a motoring process it's not a sandbox but uh, it's a kind of yeah, it's a monitoring process which could be similar than a sandbox sometimes. That's it for me. Thanks, Laurent. Um, if we go why Luxembourg, well, it's a leading financial center. I won't go through all the the numbers, but uh, you have to know that Luxembourg was the first European country with a licensed crypto exchange, and uh, quite importantly, um, it's the second largest fund center in the world. So this is something that you have to put on the, on the map and really consider when you want to do business in Luxembourg. Uh, yeah, as I said, uh, it's quite active uh, in terms of, uh, of blockchain as well, not only fintech. Uh, the financial regulator was one of the first to issue a statement in 2014. You can do a lot of your business in English, French or German. Uh, we also have two crypto exchanges already licensed here uh, in Luxembourg. Uh, I, want, I mentioned earlier on uh, Bitfryer, we also have Bitstamp. Uh, there was a law on blockchain in circulation of tokens uh, as dematerialized securities, which was uh, done as a Valentine's gift by our finance minister last year. And um, we have a lot of partnerships with key fintech hubs around the world. Um, you can see on the right that there are uh, quite big names in terms of, uh, of blockchain here. Um, sorry, Rakuten, I don't know why I missed it, this one. Uh, but a lot of uh, company and uh, it's growing every day. Uh, we have uh, here the, the FinTech ecosystem value chain. Uh, we have support, as I said, of public initiatives, private incubators and accelerators. Uh, we also have initiatives at the industry level, such as uh, Alfie with the digital and uh, blockchain group. Uh, we have financing uh, via the public and private um, sector so you can find some specific uh, scheme to develop your companies and your projects so don't hesitate to have a look or ask for questions and we also are quite active in R&D. Uh, we are also uh, thanks to Alex and, uh, and the team at the, at the loft uh, we are developing a lot of international partnerships uh, worldwide so you can benefit from it wherever you want and wherever your business might bring you. So as you can see, and as I said, the loft is all about community and uh, initiatives and projects. Uh, we are a bubbly community uh, having uh, ideas like uh, 100 per day. So don't hesitate to come with 
even more ideas and uh, you can ask for help and we will make it happen. Thank you. So that's it uh, on my side and I leave the mic to our next uh, speaker, Tom. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for having me today in the webinar. So I'm going to briefly present what InfraChain is. Uh, so InfraChain, we are a non-profit blockchain organization uh, driven by the private sector, but with a strong public support. Actually, we have been created three years ago uh, the initiative of Digital Luxembourg. Digital Luxembourg being the government's initiative to digitalize the Luxembourg uh, economy and the Luxembourg society. Our members, they, uh, they come from various uh, backgrounds, from various uh, horizons, so it's a very mixed um, community. We have blockchain startups, we have IT solution and system providers, we have telcos, law firms, consultants, research institutions, and so on. So it's really a wide representation of the blockchain ecosystem uh, in general. Uh, we're not limited to, to Luxembourg, although we are uh, based in Luxembourg, so we have private membership in some countries in Italy, Slovenia, to, to name just a few. Uh, the latest one being uh, from Sweden, so uh, we are basically open uh, to companies from all, uh, all over the place. Now, the main aim at the beginning of InfraChain, why was InfraChain created, was really to provide an environment for enterprise uh, blockchain applications to develop. And here I come to the point that you see this community-driven uh, governance. So at the beginning, um, there was strong request actually from uh, companies uh, wanting to have uh, a private blockchain. Uh, but with some of the benefits of a public blockchain. Now, how do you do that? So basically, how do you do that bridge between a strong centralization, which is um, uh, the case in private blockchains, to decentralization in public blockchain? That's where InfraChain comes in. So we provide community-driven governance, meaning that we provide uh, governance for private blockchain through the InfraChain community, so which brings then this decentralized element uh, to the governance. Uh, for instance, we defined last year for the Ministry for Digitalization here in Luxembourg governance for its public sector uh, blockchain, and we are also very active in a European project which is called Token, and which I will also explain a bit more um, later. And part of this process, we are currently developing a quality label for nodes um, operators. And last but not least, also uh, our actions, of course, we are a community, so we have a strong focus also on awareness and dissemination on information of blockchain and specifically on operational uh, blockchain use cases. Now, we, InfraChain, we are also active uh, on operation level at EU level, so we are a strong supporter of the EU, EU uh, blockchain initiatives, and I picked out the two here. The one is the EBSI, the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure, as Anthony in his fantastic introduction already mentioned, so I myself a member of the FCA Policy Advisory Group, and our technical lead, Thierry Grandjean, is in the technical um, advisory group. And actually, InfraChain will uh, later this month also uh, put in operation the first EPSI node uh, for uh, Luxembourg. So the first EPSI node for Luxembourg uh, will be managed by uh, InfraChain and this on behalf of the Ministry for Digitalization. The other project I had already briefly mentioned that is the token project. So a token that stands for transforming public services with GLT. So this is a project which is funded by Horizon 2020, where a consortium of 11, 11 institutions, companies, or associations like ourselves. And the goal of Token is actually to develop an experimental ecosystem to enable the adoption of the DLTs and also to prove actually the value uh, of DLTs uh, in the public sector. And we do this through use cases, through, through replicable use cases. So we want these use cases not only to exist within the token project, but also later to be uh, applied uh, by, by other entities. If you're interested in that, so I put the, um, the, the URL uh, in the slide. So it's not only for people involved in the public service, but it's also to any entity that is involved uh, with public service. So uh, be it as a provider also, just somebody who has relations with public uh, 
administrations. Um, InfraChain is also active on a more international level, so not only at EU, uh, for instance, we are a member of uh, INATVA, it's a very active one. We are represented in the different working groups, and we also, uh, through our member PWC and Thomas Campioni, we actually have the co chair of the finance, of one of the finance subgroups in INATVA. We're very, uh, very supportive of that organization and also very active on the OECD level, being implicated in the digital process, or as again, Anthony uh, already mentioned, um, I was myself a member of the Blockchain Expert Policy Advisory Board that finished its work earlier in March, April. Actually, the objective of that board was to formulate policy guidelines for decision makers, and these policy guidelines are currently being discussed by the OECD member states. Now, this is what we currently do. And now a brief um, look also on projects that we've started now, looking a bit into the future. So actually into the future, it's the, the way to become really a blockchain hub of excellence. And this is a way that we do not go uh, alone. You see here that we are implicated in a project with uh, different partners. So one of the partners and a very close partner being the lot itself. And then we have also two research institutions, one being the LIST, the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology, which, which is an RTO, a research technology organization, and also the Interdisciplinary Center for Security, Reliability and Trust, the SNT, which is a center of the University of Luxembourg. And last but not least, also in this project, there is another blockchain association of Luxembourg called Let's Block. Um, so the five partners, we want to actually follow up on a call that has uh, been included in the Luxembourg government's coalition agreement, uh, which actually intends to develop more public-private uh, initiatives. So they specifically mentioned also infrastructure as an example uh, in the financial industry, but not only. So we want really to push uh, blockchain further, basically take it further than what infrachain does today. So we have to develop together uh, four core objectives. Uh, it's the education and skills enhancement, so which is a very important pillar and which goes beyond simply uh, technical skills, but it's also managerial skills to really understand really what the full potential, the, um, the disruptive potential of blockchain is, specifically the disruptive uh, potential for specific ecosystems. So I think the Finance sector has already understood that uh, very well, very well. But we see that in a lot of parts, uh, in a lot of other parts of the economy, that is not necessarily the case. The collaborative R and D part, so we do that together with our two partners uh, from research, so List and SNT. That is definitely to cover different aspects in blockchain, which we do not have uh, solutions today. So it's although blockchain, of course, has already more than ten years, so there's still a lot of topics that need closer attention, closer, uh, more research. So that's what we do with our research partners. Also assisting companies and ecosystem to develop Fox uh, MVPs. Um, so really that they can get access, immediate access to a whole ecosystem and also, um, yes, get access to the resources that they might not get um, otherwise. And then I say access to the ecosystem that is really an important part of our initiative, it's really the collaboration, the spirit of um, working together, with, which is at, at the core, um, and which yeah, should also, through our action, we should attract the talent. So just speaking a bit more on this uh, aspect of collaboration. So this is really what we want to bring um, to, to the different entities that uh, we want uh, to work with, to work with and really target um, ecosystems then rather than uh, individual uh, companies. So we expect a lot of benefits uh, for the different partners that we are working with. And as I said, it's something that we are launching right now. So it's still a bit of work in construction. So this is only a peek uh, or a sneak uh, peek at what will come up. But uh, you can already watch out for more information on that because I'm sure that those blog and infrachain and all the other partners you will hear a lot from that. Before I close, um, I mentioned at the beginning that one of our actions is dissemination and information awareness. So I just want to briefly also 
uh, draw your attention to, to two events. And one is the InfoChain Challenge. It's a blockchain hackathon. We're doing this uh, together this year with the Ministry for Digitalization. It's focused on public sector blockchain. There are still a few places left for teams. So if you are interested to register, there are a total awards of uh, more than 10,000 euros to win. So I think that's quite an incentive. And then we have the Infrachain Summit on the 10th of November, where we basically showcase operational UK use cases and also discuss uh, governance. So the idea here is again experience sharing, see what worked, what did not work in different cases, and how blockchain can be best applied. And with this, for now, I say thank you and look forward to your questions later. And I think it's now Tobias. Will speak for. So, so I am uh, I'm Tobias. Hi, everybody. Um, I am co founder of um, Stalker and I'm in charge of um, our beautiful investment um, platform where we enable uh, innovative companies, um, other issuers as investment funds or um, just um, startups to, to issue securities. Um, and we use um, two blockchain technologies right now. We use Ethereum and we are very proud to also have integrated. The liquid um, blockchain, which is a side chain of um, Ethereum, of uh, Bitcoin, and um, yeah, and, and we do all this actually to enable um, retail investors um, to to be able to to invest to startups and to in you know, alternative investments. Um, when when I um, um, started like this project with my with my co-founder, we we have met actually um, in in Munich at a blockchain conference. And most, more precisely, actually, in the, in the beer brewery um, late at night, we were discussing about um, ICOs and, and tokens, and it was like in the, in the beginning of like this uh, craziness of, of, of ICOs and pre-utility token issuance, and we, we said, hey, that's, that's actually a great um, um, way of um, financing um, companies, but uh, something is missing. It's, uh, it's a financial component which is missing, and um, the trustworthiness. So we said, okay, let's let's use actually this um, this relationship, um, which is great, and you can create between the, the investor and the and the venture, um, but um, give it um, um, a, a financial component, and, and that's why we said, okay, let's let's create a security um, um, tokens, and we started this project in, in 2017, and, and working um, hard um, since then to, to make it uh, from a regulatory, but uh, from also from a technology perspective happen. Um, we have launched like the first projects at the beginning of this um, year, which you can find on our website, um, stocker.io. Um, we have um, currently an offering um, ongoing, um, which is called RTD, so, so check it out. But um, but like to really see what what we are doing, I give you like um, a nice um, peek into our um, in our technology today, um, where um, this um, um, relationship actually between the between the investor and the, the venture um, will be explained. So so basically, in the next few minutes, you will see how um, on our platform you can create um, an account, how to do. Um, KYC um, um, AML um, checks um, and how this all is then connected um, to to blockchain in order for for any for any investor to to create a, a compliant um, securities account um, without actually the need of a bank or any um, intermediary. Um, we 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 really love the disintermediation um, concept and the and the trustless system of um, blockchain architecture. And want to enable everybody to hold his own securities account and also to manage it. Um, on the other side, we also want to enable um, every issuer to um, create um, its own um, securities um, without actually the need of um, many, many, many intermediaries. So I will dive into this. Um, you can see, like the first is like the investors' journey, where you create um, your own um, securities account. Um, on on Stocker, you just like put like the password, um, and then you have created um, an account as as you do on any platform um, which is existing out there. And there you see like the next step will be then um, we have integrated um, uh, a state of art um, um, digital KYC onboarding um, process, which is um, crucial 
um, for um, issuing securities and tokens, not only for um, being able to, 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 to be sure that the people um, have a clean um, background in, in terms of AML and KYC, but also like for the issuers to know at, at what time and, and who is actually holding um, their own securities to be able to manage um, the, um, the securities 24 hours, seven days a week. So here you see basically like the, the, the KYC process. So you get like your ID cards, um, you scan it, um, then there will be a face verification, um, which is comparing like the pictures in the background, um, the part of like the, um, the, top, the information is read out of the, of the passport. And then in the background, everything is um, checked um, um, against like PEP and sanctions lists um, and, and other verification. The cool thing also we have integrated um, a verification on the mobile phone number. So basically the, the address the person is putting in is compared um, with the address they have um, provided to the telephone um, company. So uh, and it's full automatized um, onboarding very, very quick. Um, and that's it. And then um, the next step is simply like to connect your own um, um, blockchain address here. Um, in this example, we have like the um, a register Ethereum button where you can connect with um, MetaMask at the moment or, or Ledger. Um, you simply connect um, your um, um, Ethereum address there. You can name it and, and that's it. And what happens then is actually that this Ethereum address is connected um, with the data um, um, which are is securely um, saved um, on, a, on, a, on a server in, in, in Luxembourg, managed by um, um, by Digital KYC, which is a um, telephone provider and, and is also like regulated by the CSSF. And here you see like you can have like a sneak peek in the in the in the backend um, after like um, you have created like this account. So this is now. So this is now done, and you will and you will see how everything um, comes comes together um, um, in a few seconds. But before um, we go into this, you will have like just like a, a few on the um, on the KYC in the back end, right? So the compliance officer sees all this. They, they like a risk matrix. They can break by all the documentation, and they can still also like manually manually recheck and um, approve like the the person who is. Um, onboarded on um, Stalker. So this is like the, the compliance um, office of you, if you like. And, and now we get into like the connection between this, this data, which is verified, um, KYC verified, and the blockchain address. And this is like the, the main connector actually, which makes um, security tokens um, issuable and manageable. So we have like two um, parameters here. One is like the KYC document status approved. And below, you see like the um, Ethereum address here, like the blockchain address, where you receive um, finally like your your securities, which are issued by the um, issuers, by the ventures, and the like. And the last thing is here, the issuer will then be able to to manage the, the securities um, in, a, in a in a very attractive way. They can see how many tokens are issued, um, and where like the investors um, come from. Um, and they receive all the data if they um, if they need of the investors, and and this is this is like a register equity to um, 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 Luxembourg is why we also in Luxembourg is actually because of the um, flexible companies law, and we really um, believe in that. And um, and in Luxembourg as an issue, you are able to manage your own um, um, securities register, and that's actually what we are doing with the tokenization. And the blockchain. So basically, here you can see like all the investors, um, the token holders, and um, you can um, derive all the information out of this. And, and when some of these um, investors transfers to another um, registered um, investors who, who has done um, like an AML KYC process, they see um, like the register will be automatically updated, um, which is very convenient. And, um, and nice, and, and when all of this comes together, this is actually what, what it means as securities tokens issuance process. And I think that's, um, that might be very interesting for you to see. Here you see like in the last slide, and um, we also cooperate um, with Tilindo schools providing us with them, with the KYC um, solution for our um, projects. So 
So that's um, basically um, like an insight in what we are doing. And um, as we are in, in Luxembourg, um, we, we really, really appreciate actually the, the access to the regulator, which is also given by the, by the loft. And we appreciate like the, the corporate um, and flexible corporate um, environment. So basically like the corporate law is really allowing um, this direct connection between the, 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 the issuer and um, the investor. Um, yeah, and finally it's like a cool um, community. Um, as, as you, you may um, listen also from, from other countries, I just want to, to tell you when you set up like something in Luxembourg and you come to the loft, we definitely give you um, a favorable pricing um, to issue your own securities on, um, on Stocker. So um, don't, don't hesitate to contact uh, me under um, Tobias um, at stocker.io or any, any, any other of our um, founders or employees. And, um, and then raise your you raise your funding via via stocking a stocker and um, issue like your security tokens um, there. So that's basically it from from my side, and I'm really looking forward also like to to any questions you may you may have. Thanks, Tobias. Uh, I think we will leave uh, now the floor to the to the questions. Uh, I've read some questions on the chat so let's just two people to ask that question and then i have a final question for you all to answer and if you're in the meantime other people have questions just don't hesitate and put it on the chat or just send it thanks Maybe, if you don't mind reading the Alex's um, question, please. Yes, sure. So Alex has a question for you, Tobias. Uh, why did you decide to launch your fintech in Luxembourg and not in Germany? So the answer is um, quite quite simple. It's um, it's, it's really because of um, the 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 ease of doing business in, in Luxembourg, which uh, where you can talk directly um, to a regulator. You don't have like this formalistic um, processes when you um, go to other countries, especially also like um, Germany, as you mentioned. Um, it's a little bit more uh, formalistic. Um, there are so many um, different um, lobby groups um, involved. So it's not that easy um, to establish your, your business um, as it is in, in Luxembourg. And the other thing I think is like the flexible corporate law. Um, Laurent mentioned in the beginning that um, there are efforts like to even um, further modernize like the law in, in Luxembourg, what we think already with the current um, corporate uh, law structures, um, you can do a lot of stuff which is not possible in, in other countries. Thank you. And I think there are more questions for you, Tobias. I'll uh, summarize them. Uh, against which sanction list do you screen at the account opening? And do you use an external providers? Uh, would you or could you share the client's data with other blockchain? So basically, the, the, like, to answer like the, the last one first, so the data is, um, of the investors is not stored on a blockchain at all. So it's just connected actually with the data securely saved on a secure um, server. Um, the, the, the data um, of, the, of the investors um, is screened um, against um, like Basel criteria. Um, we, we have implemented um, standard checks. So it's patent and sanctions um, and lists. Um, and, and so forth. So um, we, in additionally, there is also like an internet um, and screening process. So this is all. Um, this is all. This is all done um, like that. So so basically, no storage of um, an investor data on the blockchain. It's just like the connection, which enables like to see like the transactions of the different investors for the for the for the issuer. Um, the type of the transaction, um, the amount uh, the people hold um, of your securities, um, and the date, the timestamp. Okay, and uh, still on for you, Tobias, did you present your solution to the CSSF? And if so, what was their reaction? They loved it. We have to have done it, and they, they really liked it because they, they really liked this transparency component. 
um, obviously um, um, regulators are um, um, there to, to regulate and, um, and also they have to ask um, critical um, questions and um, we are in constant contact with the CSSF and um, obviously it's a, it's a challenge for every, every regulator I think um, to, um, to see these kind of security token offerings um, coming um, especially when, when you disintermediate so many um, players in the process in between, which are regulated by regulators and who are, it's not a secret, who are all paying um, customers also of the regulators, right? Okay, one uh, more question for uh, Laurent. Peter, what does it take for a blockchain startup to work with Societe Generale? And what are the main conditions and is it actually possible? Yes, of course it's possible. Uh, indeed, it's possible. I would say just one condition uh, and the basic one, you need to have a unique selling proposition that match with a challenge of the bank or future business model. And uh, it could be the first, uh, the first condition and after, uh, let's see, uh, to make it happen. But of course. And uh, Wim, you have a question as well? Um, yes, uh, Tobias, that's a question for you. Um, so the keys, uh, who is holding the keys? Uh, how does the custody process for the keys work uh, at Stoker? So, so basically the, the, the keys are held by the investors themselves. So we don't um, provide any um, custody solution um, for, for the investors. So basically what we are only providing is um, like the connection um, between the investor and the, and the issuer. What we have implemented, however, is um, like a recovery and process for the securities in case um, you as an investor, you lose your um, private key. Because um, in the end, um, the issue knows um, at all times who is holding um, their, their token. So the recovery process is, is, quite, is quite simple to implement. Um, I think that hopefully it answers your, your question. Okay, thanks. Uh, Arnab, do you have a question as well? Ah, actually, I asked a question like, what is the plan for Luxembourg's involvement in central bank digital currency, CBDC, regarding discussion? Do you see any developments from Luxembourg on that point? It's both for Emily and Laurent. I can take it, Emily. So I, I'm, I'm not aware of uh, any topics except that Bank Central where I, I've done something with uh, a French uh, startup, uh, Scorechain. Uh, so they're Luxembourgish and French, but it was uh, it has been done during a French hackathon. So I know that they have uh, they, are, they are looking in this uh, in this topic. But uh, yes, definitely uh, this is something that uh, we need to to look in the future because we have seen a lot of. Uh, Central Bank digital currency uh, project around the world, and we know that 80% of the central bank have started project. Um, so uh, yeah, we need to look in this project. That's it for me. Does it answer your question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, Bianca, I think you have a question as well. Bianca, please go ahead. Bianca? Okay, um, well, uh, she's asking about uh, the right talent and how is it um, easy or not to find these talents in Luxembourg? So any of you having, uh, maybe Tom, you are directly looking or you're directly in touch with yeah. for this? Yes, I, I, can, I can try to give an answer. I think though it's a very general answer because I think this uh, difficulty uh, for finding blockchain experts is the same difficulty as finding IT specialists in general. There is a shortage. It's a shortage in Luxembourg, it's a shortage in Europe, it's a shortage actually also if you go to Silicon Valley, they will tell you the, uh, the same thing. What we see is that uh, in on enterprise level blockchain is still uh, an emerging topic um, so we see there is an increasing uh, supply of specialists but generally it's uh, of course uh, difficult to get one now the positive thing is of course that we have here a very good uh, ecosystem and mostly 
uh, the loft, uh, which has some very interesting projects. We have this project that I mentioned before that we have uh, together also. So um, I think it's very um, interesting ground uh, ground to, to do projects. Yeah, and I think that the blockchain lab is also designed for that is to help some professionals to gain some knowledge in, in the blockchain area. So that would potentially develop an interest and uh, some new careers for people. Um, we have another question for you, Tom. Uh, does your platform support tokenization of physical assets like uh, artwork, luxury goods, and or are there any yeah. different type of physical assets? Yeah. Actually, this is a question which is a layer uh, above, uh, above what we do. So we are only active on the infrastructure layer. So we do not touch what is happening actually at the uh, blockchain uh, layer. Uh, we are not at all involved in what is being done there. So it's really about the about uh, the network about the infrastructure part. But we have already tokenized some real estate in Luxembourg, so I would say yes. <laughs> yes, but not the infra chain part. <laughs> but not infra chain, yeah. Yeah, there are other actors doing the, the tokenization. Exactly. Um, okay, uh, maybe Dennis, you want to ask your question directly? Uh, yeah, sure. Just a simple uh, question, really. Just to understanding that you don't, uh, you're not uh, putting the uh, uh, the investor information into the uh, into the blockchain. I was just curious to know if if you had considered that, that from the uh, AML KYC process to streamline that. Um, actually, we don't see a real benefit to put it like data directly into into the blockchain. Um, and I think when we um, have like a KYC whitelisting solution as um, Stalker provides, um, where you connect um, these data, which are securely saved um, and also and also modular, right? Um, then um, you have all the, the the benefits actually on on this. Of course, this creates like an ID um, if if you like so. Which is then also shareable with with other exchanges and, and other providers in, in this in this space. But as, as such, like putting data directly on the blockchain, which is uh, immutable, we don't see like um, a direct benefit in the moment. Okay. Well, then we will close the questions. I will just ask one final one to any three of you. So feel free to all answer these questions. Um, do you believe Luxembourg is a good place to do the blockchain? Um, if so, why? And uh, just give one recommendation to those having, I don't know, an interest in blockchain or want to create a blockchain project. Enjoy. <laughs> I, I can start if you like. Of course, it's a rhetoric question. Of course, the answer is yes. And the reason why is that uh, I mentioned the ecosystem, I mentioned about collaboration. Um, in Luxembourg, it's very easy to get people together, to get different people from different sectors also working together. We do it on a regular basis. Uh, we have also the different platforms to do that. A lot of the platform is Infrachain. We have a platform for doing that. So. That I see definitely as one advantage of us to, to doing it besides having a government which is open to um, to innovation. You mentioned uh, the blockchain uh, law introduced in finance uh, last year. And uh, also I think uh, Luxembourg in general is often seen as a, as a test bet because it's a very international country, a very open country. So uh, I think this I would all see as arguments uh, for Luxembourg. Thanks, Tom. Laurent? I would say yes, of course. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we should, uh, we should move forward because uh, the yes of uh, today will not be the yes of tomorrow when we see that uh, a lot of uh, countries are moving forward, like Switzerland, Germany, uh, Liechtenstein, and France. This is why we, we did our gap analysis. So uh, I would say yes, uh, connectivity, it's quite easy to open the door in Luxembourg to move forward. Uh, connection, uh, but uh, you need to think uh, uh, big in Luxembourg because it's a small country uh, in terms of size and uh, definitely in terms of unique selling proposition, you need to, to think Europe and world, in, but not Luxembourg uh, uh, as a country. So, yes. Thanks, Laurent. And finally, Tobias. Yeah, absolutely. I agree um, with everybody. In, in principle, it's <clears throat> it's a great country to to, to do blockchain um, projects. You have um, a passionate finance minister. You have um, very knowledgeable people like Emily and uh, you, Laura. 
um, supporting also the ecosystem and um, obviously um, Tom and, and Infrachain. I think there are a lot of cool um, projects um, out there um, who can also benefit um, from each other, but um, obviously, yes, um, we, we also need to go um, forward and um, also like push and um, keep pushing the, the regulator, keep pushing also the legislator um, to, to make further progress. Well, thank you for all these recommendations. So now you know what to do um, to all the participants to this webinar. So if you have a blockchain project ID, just come see one of us and we will be more than happy to help you uh, make your life, no, your project happen. Um, well, that's it for this webinar. Thank you to all the speakers for your time and uh, insights on the, on the topic. Thanks to all the participants and their, their questions. And I leave the floor to Anthony to close up this webinar. Thank you very much for having been with us today for our last and fifth international showcase, this time focusing on the blockchain industry. Let me briefly switch and show you what's happening tomorrow and on Friday. So our, this week's from being over. Tomorrow we welcome you to our last international leaders episode on the challenges and opportunities in asset management alternative data and NI with Reza Roshidi, uh, global chief scientist at AIG and lead research at the University of Oxford. On Friday, we welcome you to our closing summer break events, the CEO roundtable, the future of of financial services with none other than Arnaud Jacques Massi of Sokgen Luxembourg Group, Robert van Gerkhoff, Managing Director of BNP Paribas, Eduardo Gamulia, Country Head of State Street Luxembourg, moderated none other than by Nasir Subari. Be join us, be come on board, and thank you very much again for being with us. If you would like to know more about the Love General activities, please subscribe to our newsletter and see you soon. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye.